Hi, this is Tamara from MooglyBlog.com, and in this video, I'm going to be demonstrating how to assemble the Adventure Travel Case, which is a free pattern you'll find on MooglyBlog.com. Please go to the link in the description. There you will find links to the written pattern and all the supplies you need. You will need the written pattern to make this project. I won't be demonstrating the actual stitches because it's almost exclusively single crochet. So you'll need to be able to follow the written pattern, but for the assembly, we'll be doing that together here today. So let's go ahead and get started. We're going to need Red Heart Scrubby Smoothie, some buttons, a US H hook, this one is by Furls, your favorite stitch markers, mine are by Clover USA, and of course the standard supplies like scissors and a yarn needle. The other thing I recommend for this pattern is a bit of plastic canvas. You can see that right here. This is available at most, most craft stores, and again, I have a link out to the specific kind I like as well. So let's take a look at what the Adventure Travel Case includes. Here's the Adventure Travel Case. This is a pretty unique pattern, so I thought we'd do a quick little tour of it first. It's totally customizable. This is something that for the front and all these decorations, you would want to do whatever theme you like for your child or whoever you're making it for. You could spell out their name. I tried to write the word adventure using surface crochet, but however you wanna do it. You can add any sort of applique. I've added a mountain here. I've only sewed it though on two sides. It's a secret little pocket of its own. And I just decorated it with some buttons I found at the store. You can see, if we turn it sideways here, it sort of looks like a book with handles or maybe a small suitcase. And when you open it up, you'll find lots of pockets. I've designed five different pocket sizes for this project, and you can mix and match them to make your own custom adventure travel case. On this side, you can see we've got a large pocket, and I've created three button, three button loops, I should say. I didn't create the buttons, I bought the buttons. Um, obviously, I hope. So I uh, bought these buttons and I created three button loops to hold down whatever is in this pocket. Right there, hold it right safe inside as you carry it. And then on this side, we've got four different size pockets that are a fair bit smaller, but they come in four different sizes. So again, you can customize your case for whatever you want to carry. We've got a large pocket, medium pocket, small pocket, and sort of a pencil pocket here like so. So let's go ahead and get to work assembling our adventure travel case. So once you've got all the individual pieces made, which again are just simple single crochet, so follow the link in the pattern, or excuse me, follow the link in the description for the pattern, then it's time to start assembly. And that's what I wanted to focus on in this video. Now, you'll notice that on the supply list, it calls for two sheets of plastic canvas. This is very, um, common to find stuff, you can find it in most craft stores. And these, this is my inner panel, you've made two of these. This will be the base for the inside of your travel case. So when we cut our plastic canvas, we want it to be just a little bit smaller than these inner panels. I cut this one, it is 8.75 inches in this dimension and 10.5 inches this way. This is the width that the plastic canvas I like to buy comes in, so that part was very easy. I just had to cut it off so it was 8.75 8 inches wide. So since gauge can vary a little bit, um, if your inner pieces didn't turn out the exact same size as mine, just make sure to cut that plastic canvas just a little bit smaller. Now, when you buy plastic canvas, it comes pure white. I have drawn these lines on using just a simple uh, permanent marker. and. The reason I drew these lines was to help me with the placement for my pockets. Now, I wrote up the, in the pattern four different pocket sizes, and of course you can mix and match these for whatever you want to put in your case. The main thing is you want to be able to fit them on your inner panels. So I wanted to get all four of my pockets on one inner panel. So I just used them um, up against the plastic canvas and sort of drew on where I wanted each of them to end up. Now, when you crochet these pieces, um, the final few rows come in a little bit so that you get a nice little curve to the bottom of your pocket. So you'll wanna tuck in those sides a little bit too when you sew them down so that they stick out just a little bit to make it easier to put your fun stuff inside. So I drew this out on here because while I'm going to be sewing these, obviously I don't want this part to show, I'm gonna be sewing these to the inner panel. On the other side of the inner panel will be this. So if I put them, let's see, I'm gonna go ahead and flip this over. And if I put my inner panel right there, right on top, flip it over again. When I sew my pocket to the panel, I'm going to sew all the way through and sew through the plastic canvas at the same time. So let me show you a little bit how that works. 
You'll notice, now this was the first pocket I made and I didn't realize, I didn't think about it at the time, I should have left both ends long. So lesson learned, make sure you leave long ends on your pockets, it will make them a lot easier to sew on. As I got a little further, I remembered to do that, so I did went ahead and did that on this nice great big pocket that I made right here. You can see I actually ended up switching balls of yarn at this point, it looks like. So I've got a few extra ends, which will make it even easier to weave in. Okay, so let's start our sewing actually with one of our smaller pockets. This one right here. It's got two nice clean long ends, so I'll be able to sew that one on. So when you sew it on, of course, you'll need a yarn needle. Any style is fine. I happen to like this bent tip one today. Uh, the main thing is just to make sure, of course, that it will go through your plastic canvas. So you may need to make sure it's not one of your bigger ones. So let's go ahead. I want this pocket to be in my upper right corner. There's not really a wrong side or a right side to the inner pockets here, or the inner panels here. Um, it's just single crochet, so you don't have to worry about that part. And then I'm just going to find an upper corner here, this end from my pocket, and put that on my yarn needle. And then if you wanted to, actually, this is a good tip, before you start sewing these together, you can take um, some stitch markers and just use it to really center that plastic canvas so it doesn't shift around on you while you are sewing. So I'm just going to use right through the hole of the plastic canvas. Let me pull that right in the center there so you can see it right through the hole of the plastic canvas and on through the fabric. And if I do that, oops, there we go, around the edges, that will help hold the plastic canvas up against the fabric where, right where I want it to be. So I'll just turn it around and do that again. And I can keep adjusting this if need be just to make sure that my plastic canvas is nice and centered on my fabric. And then we'll begin the actual sewing. Okay, so I've got four stitch markers here. My plastic canvas is secured onto my inner panel. So what I want to do is I want to make sure that my first needle comes up near this line because it is the top right corner of this pocket. But of course, I'm gonna be sewing from the other side. This is where our lines are going to come in really super handy because I can just sort of hold my fabric and my plastic canvas together here and come from underneath right there and just find that hole like so and just go ahead and pull that right up against my inner panel here make sure it's facing the right direction and I like that location I sure do so then I can go on back here to this side and just come down to the next hole next to my line. And of course I'll need to flip back and forth and make sure I'm going through my pocket as well, not just the inner panel. But that's about all there is to it. You just wanna go back and forth and sew through right through the edge and then make sure that's coming out on the other side of your plastic canvas. And you could use back stitches, you could use a running stitch, whatever stitch you prefer to use to sew it on. Um, the younger the child, the more use it will get. Of course, the more I heavily I recommend you sew it together. But just take your time and go through the plastic canvas and that inner panel and your pockets and you'll end up with a much sturdier end result. Because that plastic canvas, while it's soft and flexible, will add a fair bit of sturdiness to our interior pockets. Just one other caution as you sew them on, do make sure like I was talking about, I drew this just a little bit narrower than the pocket. You just want to make sure to add a little bit of a curve there so that your pocket does stand out from your inner panel. If you sew it completely flat, it'll be that much harder to get things in there and it will really limit the amount of things you can get in there. After you've got your pocket sewn on, we're going to add some little loops and buttons to help secure what we do put in our pockets. So we'll be doing that next. Okay, so I have finished my two interior panels complete with pockets. Now it's a little bit harder to see it with this variegated cotton yarn here, but you can see I've got my big pocket, my medium pocket, my small pocket, and my long pocket all sewn on. I sewed that one on sideways. And this one will be great for things like pens. Now, because this one's, I've been planning to use this one for things like pens, I didn't bother putting a button on here, but as soon as I got these buttons all, or these pockets, excuse me, all sewn on, I went ahead and added a large button to each of the ones that I do want to add a button to. And these were just some simple white buttons that I found at my local Joanne Fabrics store. So you can see on the back here, 
how I've sewn right on through the plastic canvas. And I just went ahead and tied these off nicely um, and cut them trimmed. This will, I didn't cut them too close to the knots or anything. I just left a few inches, but this will all get enclosed inside our little travel book. So I don't have to worry about weaving those in. And I just want to show you my other panel here. I've put three buttons across the top of this one because it is one big pocket. This is the great big large pocket. And that took up pretty much the whole thing. I still worked through pl plastic canvas. And then across the top, right here where it's not actually attached, I just did a real quick tacking down of the inner panel to the plastic canvas itself to help secure that. Um, on this one, I didn't feel it necessary to do that because after sewing on all, all four pockets, it is really well attached and I'm not really worried about it. So you've got your pockets sewn on to both your interior panels. You've got your buttons attached. The next, th next thing to do is add the button loops. So to do that, I'm just going to pick up my hook and my yarn again, whatever I use for my interior panels. And I just want to chain a chain that's long enough to go all the way around whatever buttons I've chosen and tack down to the inner panel without clothes being too small to be able to keep things in here. So basically what I'm trying to say is if you know what you're going to be putting in those pockets, go ahead and put them in there to help you determine how long your loops are going to be. Now, everybody's buttons are going to be a different size unless you happen to pick up this exact one or these exact packages. These are one inch buttons. So I need to make sure my chain's long enough to go around there and tack down and hold it closed without um, being too tight, without being able to get it around that button loop. So right now I just have a chain of 15 on my hook. So I literally, when I'm making something like this, it's just a matter of add a chain, take away a chain until it seems to be the right length. So I would just wrap that, and it'll be easier if I turn it this way, wrap that around my button and sort of hold those ends real close together and hold them down against the fabric where I want them to be and see, is that gonna be, give me the room to put what I want to put in this pocket in there. Is that going to be enough space? And is it and going to be enough space too to get around that button, put it on and take it off so, and keep it closed? So it has to be tight enough to keep it closed, but small enough to keep that compartment shut. So it can be, like I say, a little bit of experimentation. I found that 15 chains was the perfect length for me, but you can adjust that uh, for your own pocket, what you plan on putting into it, what pocket sizes you used. And indeed, if you've sewn your pockets down super flat, like this uh, pen one here, and if it doesn't need a button, then you can skip the loop altogether. So once you've added loops to all the ones you wanna add loops to, you can see on the big one here, I'm going to add three because this is one big wide pocket and I wanna be able to put something really big in there without it falling out. Um, so yeah, once I've got all those loops added, then it will be time to set these aside and work on our outer cover. So let's take a quick look at that now. Okay, so here we have the cover piece of our travel case. This is the single biggest piece we make, and it's all single crochets except for two rows, which are worked as front post single crochet. So I have a separate tutorial for that, which I will link out. This, those two rows right there sort of create the binding. So if you think of this as a book cover, that would be the fold right there. And those would be sort of like our crease, like sort of like to create the impression of a hardback book, so to speak. So what you want to do before you start adding those inner panels, this is where we get to decorate the cover of our book. And this is a very personal thing. You could do tons of different things to the cover of your travel case. You could use buttons, you could use surface crochet, you could use appliques, whatever you wanted to do. I plan on doing a little bit of surface crochet up here, and then I want to add this mountain applique down here, which I designed specifically for this pattern, and the pattern for this is included with the travel case pattern. It's just a simple mountain, um, just sort of jagged shape here. I did all again, all with single crochets, just like the rest of this project. And I can go ahead and sew this right to the front of my book, just to give it a little more interest in life. And one of the reasons I chose this mountain applique for the cover of my book is because I want to sew it on with a little special secret. You'll see I left a really long tail, really, really long tail here. And this is what I'll be using to sew it on, just as the same as when we sewed the pockets to our inner panels. But when I sew this on, I'm only going to sew along this left edge here, which is the edge closest to the binding, and along the bottom here. And the reason I'm going to do that is so that this edge right here remains open. And when I add my handles and the inner panel so we can carry our carrying case, the opening for a very secret little pocket will be right there on the front of our book. But that's how I'm gonna do mine, but that's not how you have to do yours. Again, there are so many fun things you could do to decorate this and personalize it for your child or your recipient. You should definitely have fun with this section. So when I come back, I'll have decorated 
created the front of mine and it'll be time to assemble our travel case all into one piece. All right, and here we are. I've decorated the front of my travel case. I just used surface crochet to write the word adventure, added some fun buttons that I found at my local Joann's, and I added that mountain applique, leaving this side open for a fun secret pocket. Now you'll see I've also added one of the handles, and that's what I wanna talk about next. We're going to make two handles, just like this, and then sew each one to the side of our travel case so that when it's in use, you can hold it by the handles and carry it along with you. So first we need to figure out where to put those handles. Um, again, the handles are all single crochet, just three rows of simple single crochet, so there's no need, I'd hope, to demo that. We just need to get it sewn on here. So in order to center it nicely and give a nice size for an adult hand or a child hand, I counted in um, 11 on each side here. So in the 12th stitch, I put a stitch marker. You can see that a little bit easier right here. And then I used those to mark the outside edges of my handle. So let's go ahead and sew that second handle on together. I'm going to start by picking up the second handle that I've already made. Now I mentioned this is just single crochet and it's in three rows. I believe it's 23 stitches per row. So when you make three rows, you're gonna end up with both ends on one end of your handle. And we want an end on each end so that we can sew it on because why add more Why add more yarn, right? We can just use the ends we've got from our handle to sew it onto our case. So what I'm going to do is a little trick that will actually also add a little more stability to our handle and keep it from being quite as stretchy. Since we're using cotton yarn, it doesn't have a lot of stretch built in. So we can use that to our advantage in this project. I'm going to take one of my ends and it doesn't matter which one, whether it was the first one or the last one, and I'm just going to weave it right into the center of my handle there. So I'll start off just getting it over into the center there gently. And then I'm just going to send it right up the center row. So this takes a couple minutes, but it will help add a little bit um, more sturdiness to your handle because with this one string going up the center, it's not a stitch. It doesn't want to stretch nearly as much. It's kind of, I don't know if it comes across on camera, but if I pull right there, you can see there's some stretch where I haven't done it yet. And where I've done it, there's a little bit of stretch, but there's a lot less. That center string is really holding it pretty, pretty sturdy there. So you just want to go ahead and use your yarn needle to send it right up the center there. And it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, I mean, it's the same color, so it's gonna be hidden anyway. It's just a matter of getting it up through the center there to the other end. And then when you get to that other end, handy dandy, you'll have an end there to sew it onto your case with. So I've got a few more moves here before I get to the end with my needle. So I will see you in just a moment when we've got our two ends ready to sew with. Okay, so I have woven it in all the way to the end, and I'm just going to take one more stitch here and put it on an end of the end, so to speak, in a corner here, so that's the right place to start sewing with. It's shortened it up considerably, so when you cut your ends for these handles, make sure you leave them nice and long so that you can weave at least one of them all the way through and still use it to sew. So then you want to come over here, again, to where you've marked out your handles. Um, one more time, there's 11 stitches on each end there, so it's the 12th stitch in, from either end that I've marked, and that's where I'm going to go ahead and start sewing my first handle. And I like to do it from this side because it's the outside of the cover and I can just get a really good idea of how it's going to look and make sure that the outside of our project is absolutely as beautiful as we can make it. So to start sewing it on, I'm just going to simply whip stitch it starting in the marked stitch. So I'll just go under those two loops with my yarn and pull my handle right on down. Let me getting a little twisted up here in my lap. So let me just get things straightened out. There we go. So I can just go ahead and pull that right on down to our fabric. Then I'm going to go into each of those. Whoops, I dropped my yarn. Let's try that again. If your yarn falls off out of here as it's getting shorter, you can just keep adding it. Um, if your yarn gets way too short, you may want to pick up another piece of yarn to sew this on with because you want to be able to weave this end in really well to make sure your handle is secure. So back on the needle here, we're just gonna go through one stitch of the cover and then one stitch at the end of the row here, just to sew it on down, like so. And that's all there is to that. I'm going to do the same thing again there on the other end. Of course, before I do that, I'll weave in this end. You can just do that right on the inside of your cover, very simple. 
Let me get that back in the center of our screen there. Sorry about that. There we go. And of course, I'll just keep weaving that in until it is nice and secure. Then, like I say, I'll pick up that other end and get it on my needle. And here you want to make sure that you aren't twisting your handle when you sew on that second end. So I'll take some time here and just sort of make sure it comes right across without twisting. And then this time, you'll see my string is actually on this side. So I don't want to go into the marked stitch. I want to go into three over here. So just count them out. Pretty simple stuff. And there we go. We can pull it down nice and tight and just whip stitch it right on. This is essentially just the whip stitch. So if you've used that before, then you know how to sew this on. Now you'll notice that these aren't super duper duper secure. Like these, they're a little bit wobbly. I wouldn't want to just leave them like this. You know, that's not the most secure edging or sewing I've seen for a handle. But as we assemble our inner panels and our outer cover here, we're going to be crocheting all the way around the outside through both layers. And then when we get to the handles, we're gonna crochet up over that handle and down around the other side again. And then we're going to do the same thing on the inside of each handle to help secure, again, that inner panel, but that will also make that handle itself that much more secure. So let me weave in these ends and then we'll start adding our inner panels together. Okay, so once you've got your inner panels made and you've got your outer portion, your outer cover made, complete with both handles, then you need to grab some more yarn because it's time to finally assemble the rest of our case and put those inner panels in our outer cover. You have to make a decision though before you do. Now, it depends how you plan and how you think your kid or you are planning to use this case. If you plan on just opening it and using it like this, then you can choose to have your pockets facing, I would have the pockets facing towards the handles. Let me pull this out a little bit so that when you pick it up, of course, everything just falls deeper into the pocket. That said, if you planned on taking this um, to your hotel, wherever you're going, and then using one of the handles to hang it from, then you may want to decide to put both your pockets facing the same direction, perhaps that top handle on the front, so that when they open it, they can hang it up from a hook and everything will fall down into a pocket further then. And that's one of the reasons that I put these button loops on here, so that when you do put something in a big pocket like this, you can really secure it down really tightly. Um, for this pocket, in fact, I only use the chain 10 button loops just to make it really secure. So you can make your own call here, decide which way you want your pockets to face. Um, if you plan on hanging it up, like I say, from one handle, I would have them both facing one direction. If you plan on just leaving it laying flat, then I would probably have them facing the handles so that when you pick it up, everything falls into the center. So that's a decision you'll need to make for your own case and how you plan on using it. Either way though, the basic sewing and assembly is going to be the same. You'll remember, let me kind of pull it over here, we've got our two ridges of front post single crochets there that mark out our uh, the spine of the book, that's it. So those mark out the spine of the book. So we want to sew our panels on either side of the spine. So what we just wanna do is match up the top and bottom here and then we're going to take our cover color yarn and just sew very carefully a back stitch seam right along there. And then again, with the other panel right on the other side of that spine. And then when we come around here, we'll be working a single crochet through these edges. And of course, the tops of the pockets or the bottom, however you've got it facing, it's just right here that we're need, going to need to actually sew that in with a needle. So before you start sewing, it can be a good idea to take your stitch markers and really match up all your edges from your inner panels and your outer corners to make sure everything's lined up and you can sew it exactly where you need to be. So let's go ahead and add some stitch markers to our inner panels and our outer case to get them all lined up and then we can sew them in together. Okay, so I've added stitch markers all around the outside here, matching up the parts that I want to keep together. So that helps me find the line right in here where I'm going to sew down my inner panels. And to do that, I've cut a length of yarn the same color as my outer cover. And you do need to cut yarn um, before you sew. So cut a good long length. And then I'm just going to simply come in here right at the end. And I will, actually I'm gonna start from inside here so I can weave in my end a little bit more discreetly. 
and just pull it through until you've got oh a good six to eight inches here at the end you want to make sure you leave enough to weave in and also enough so that as you sew you don't accidentally pull too hard and end up pulling out your whole your whole uh row there and end up having to redo it so at this point i'm just going to do a simple back stitch and if you're not familiar with the back stitch before you just go into the next stitch like see from one side and then you come back to where you began like so and you could do this from the inside of the um, cover you can flip it over do it from the outside whatever you prefer whatever works best for you um, doing it flat out like on a table like this might be easier it might be easier to hold in your lap just take your time and go through both layers and try and keep this sewing line lined up with one of your rows of stitching of your cover and that will help you keep a really straight line so I'm just going to continue doing that along this line and then again on this side over here and that will secure the inside of our inner panels you can see we still got our little spine right there and then I'll come back and we'll crochet all the way around the outside all right we're finally at the last step of our adventure travel case you can see right here are those lines of back stitching that I did to attach the inner portion the most inner side of our inner panels to our outer cover so now you can see when I close it they're sticking together However, I've still got all my stitch markers in. That's going to help me stay lined up as I work the final row of single crochet. And I'm going to start that from the back. It just makes the most sense. I want to be able to hide where my join is since I'm gonna be working one big continuous round at this point. So I like to start just kind of at a back bottom corner where people's eyes are going to be least focused. So I think right back here, right before you get to that spine of your book is a great place to start. And we're just gonna go ahead and start um, by pulling up some of our yarn and again I'm going to use the cover color here um, because I think it'll blend in but I also think it would be really fun to use a contrasting color here if you prefer so just get the end of my yarn here I'm going to go ahead and pick up my book and it's a little bit heavy at this point um, luckily that plastic canvas even though that's you can see it's sandwiched in there it's nice and soft so you can go ahead and fold it a little bit I mean not crease it but you can bend it a little bit as needed as you work um, I do want to point out that you want to make sure all your little ends of the yarn from your pockets that you've from the pockets that you sewed and now those ends are in there you want to make sure any of those are tucked in between your layers as you crochet so I've got my stitch markers here to help me get everything lined up so I'm just gonna go ahead and pick a place and at this point we're working into the edges around um, the sides here where we don't have like right here at the ends we've got a stitch to work into that's really nice along the sides here we're just working to the sides this is just like working into the side of a blanket or something um, anything else that you've edged before we just want to make sure to go through both those layers and make sure like I say the ends are tucked in and also that the plastic canvas is underneath there so with our hook stuck through our first stitch essentially I'm going to go ahead and yarn over with my yarn and pull that all the way through and then of course I'll just make a slip stitch just as like we normally would here working into an edge if I can find my working end here there we go uh, excuse me not a slip stitch a chain one did I say a slip stitch I meant to say a chain one so I'm gonna chain one and then I'm going to single crochet right back in that same space like so and then from here I'm just going to continue single crocheting all the way around my project now anytime I've got these two layers here an inner panel and an outer cover that I can work through obviously I'm going to work through both of those that's what holds this whole project together here this final round and you're just going to be working evenly sort of just try and stay really consistent across um, if you find out you know it's just not laying right your stitches seem a little squished together or a little too spread out you can always pull out those last few stitches and redo them no harm done and then when you get to the um, the spine gosh that's a hard word for me to remember for some reason today when you get to the spine of the book of course you'll only have one layer so you can just crochet right through the one layer there on the spine but otherwise that is it we're just gonna crochet all the way around oh one note I did mention it earlier as you work all the way around when we get to the handles here when you come to the okay first of all when you come to the corner you've got a couple different ways you can handle it I like to work sort of let me get that end tucked in I'll work in that last one and then probably 
chain two and then work in those two together and that just gives a really nice corner. If you feel like it's a little too tight there and your plastic canvas is sticking out, you could instead work three single crochets around the corner just to enclose it a little better. Whatever um, is working best with your project. Everybody's gauge and tension and sewing is just a little different. So it helps to be able to adjust this corner for whatever works best for you as you work along. So then as I come over here, I'm gonna work through both those layers up to here, and then I'm going to work along the top of the handle. And then when I get to this side, that's where I'll start working through both those layers again. And that's one of the reasons I went ahead and attached these with the stitch marker. I know that's where, when I come off that handle, that's where I start crocheting them together again, and then I can work down along the side. So I'm going to do that, and I will see you when we're ready to do the interior of our handles. Okay, so I have single crocheted all the way around the outside of my case, including up and over those handles. And at the corners, I just add that little chain too. It's a little tight, but I think with a little bit of blocking here at the end, that'll get make a really nice corner. So what we have left are just the two openings at each handle here. There should be one at each handle where you can still see the um, plastic canvas and of course we aren't fully attached so that's what we're going to do now so I want to show you a quick little trick here that we can do so we can minimize the ends we have to weave in but we can make sure to stay attached all the way across what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the base of the handle just right where it joins up to the cover itself and then I'm going to go through the stitch right behind it here on our inner liner and then I am going to if I can find my end here there we are I'll yarn over with that and pull it through like so and then I'm just going to do a sort of a surface crochet or a slip stitch through both layers at the base of the handle and each stitch behind it so I'll go into that next stitch of the inner panel like so find the working end here there we go. Yarn over that and pull it right through. And just pull it through as a slip stitch. Now that first end is a little loose. That's okay. You want to leave a few inches here so you can weave it in and so it doesn't pull out as you work. But we can weave this in when we're done with this little maneuver here. So I'm just going to continue on across to that next stitch through both panels. And then as soon as I'm at the other side of my handle here, I'm just going to go ahead and go into that one and the next stitch as I normally would, but here I'm going to work a single crochet. And if you've done what I just did, if you just work it as you normally would, you're gonna end up enclosing your handle. So make sure if you did that to pull the yarn up underneath the handle there, like so. That will keep you from accidentally enclosing your handle. Now I'm not going to slip stitch again because we are in between our handle here. We've gone across the bottom with the slip stitches now in that first stitch in between the ends of the handle, I'm going to go ahead and make a single crochet so that will match what we did around the outside. So I'm just going to continue working on across here, working through both the inner and the outer layers, of course, to make sure that we have that all enclosed. And then when I get to the other side, I will slip stitch, say that again, let me try that again. I will slip stitch through the base of the second half of the handle here right here and that layer and then I can cut off that long end and weave it in just to match the other end here and then of course I'll go ahead and do that on the other handle on the other side of my book so after that we will have all all of our inner pockets our inner panels our pockets everything will be all attached and it'll be all set all we'll have left to do is weave in the ends so I'll see you right back here with the finished book all right, and our adventure travel case is complete. I have single crocheted all the way around the outside, well, I shouldn't say there, but all the way around the outside of our book and up across the handles and then tacked down those handles as well. So we are ready to fill it up and have some fun. So I've gathered a few things that I had in mind when I designed this case. Over here in the big notebook case, you could fit a small notebook, a coloring book, um, a tablet, whatever you like. These are the smaller chain loops, as I mentioned before, and I did that on purpose to keep things like this extra safe. So you can see how nicely those fit right in there. We can just button those loops up and those aren't going anywhere. And then on this side, 
Here are some of the things I had in mind, things my kids enjoy when I was designing these pockets. A deck of cards fits great right in the medium one. Always handy in a uh, travel emergency for sure. And then, of course, you got to have a camera. This one's the Polaroid Snap Touch. Lots of fun. And that one fits perfectly right in that big pocket, like so. Keeps it nice and safe. Then you've got to have your charging cord, whether you're bringing the Polaroid Touch or a tablet or whatever it is. You know kids got to have their charging cords. So this one fits really well in this small pocket just like this. And to keep it extra secure, what I like to do is send that button loop right through the center of the cord, like so. Got to have that charging cord, right? And then, of course, we've got the pen pocket. You can fit pens right in there like so. And even sideways, those pens aren't going to go anywhere. That's nice and tight. So I didn't add a button loop to that one because pens, of course, come in different lengths. So that's how you can fill up the adventure travel case. You can add your own items, whatever you like. You can see, it closes up really well and carry it right by the handle. And there you go. You're all set. Now, I talked earlier, of course, if you wanted to put this pocket the other direction so that you could hang it from the handle when you get to your destination. That's another option. Um, it's totally up to you. Again, customize it. Make it your own. I hope you've enjoyed this pattern. If you did, be sure to give it a like. Let us know what you think in the comments. And don't forget to subscribe to the Moogly Blog channel. Be sure to hit the bell next to the subscribe button too so that you'll get notified every time there's a new video on Moogly. Thanks so much for watching and have a great day. Thank <laughs> you.